Welcome to a new In The Mail, the most popular segment hosted here on the channel. And it's been uh, just maybe two or three weeks since the last In The Mail, uh, but a lot of interesting stuff has been gathering in my special bin, so I have to do another one. And I'm going to start the video with these EVA hard shell cases. These are in a rather small format, as you may be aware, these can come in a variety of shapes, sizes and colors. They're really inexpensive and personally I like to use them to store various bits of gear, uh, test instruments in the lab that don't come with an original carry case, but also to transport uh, small PCBs like the projects that I'm working on uh, before putting them in a backpack uh, because then you can find out at the destination that all of the through-hole parts have been squished in the process so these just provide a nice solution for storing and uh, carrying various items. The sponsor of this video PCBWay.com is a professional PCB manufacturer with excellent quality and fast turnaround times. But you can get more than PCBs manufactured with PCBWay. They also do PCB assembly, injection molding, 3D printing, machining various parts so you can have an entire prototype built using their services. Check out their website linked below. Next up I have a couple of GoPro accessories and I'm gonna start with these uh, like tether lines. These can really be multi-purpose, not just for a GoPro. Uh, that's why I'm showing them in the mail bag. They're made of some steel wire inside and they come in different lengths and colors and they can even be used for like minimal security. If, if you loop them around things and, and you close them with some sort of a lock, they feel pretty strong, but you know, it, it's just the kind of thing that will work, that will work for honest people only. I think I've mentioned this before, but I've recently started kite surfing and I wanted to get one of these uh, kite line GoPro mount because of the nice viewing angles that this can provide on video. However, there is a big drawback uh, with this kind of mount because it can potentially tangle the lines. And as a beginner, that's something that I do not want to deal with because it can put me in some very dangerous situation. So I'm likely not going to be using this until I have gained some experience on the water. I'm not sure. I'll see at a later point. I just wanted to have this one ready. And because I am using my GoPro mostly on the water, I also got myself one of these GoPro floating cases. It's just made from foam, goes around your GoPro. It's bright orange, so if you drop it in the water, it will hopefully keep it floating uh, while making it visible so you can search for it. So this is an inexpensive accessory, but one that could save your more expensive camera. As usual, links for all of these items will be provided in the description below the video. Next up, another interesting item for my summer activities. I got these uh, plastic tent stakes, which uh, I plan to use with my, um, I have this like smaller UV and wind protection shelter that I got for beach days and the tent slash shelter was delivered with uh, those kind of slim mounting pins which slide right out of the sand but these plastic ones which I recently got uh, work so much nicer. I've uh, already taken three out of this package and tested them uh, this past weekend at the beach and you have to work a little bit to screw these into the sand but they provide much better grip into the sand i mean you can still pull these out of the stand out of the sand if you uh, wanted to but it, it just requires some force so i think they they do the job much better when compared to the original just slim um, stakes that the tent had and on top of that these are really cheap to get and now on to some electronics. This is uh, quite an interesting bit of kit which uh, I've been wanting to get for a while. Its price was just at the edge of what I'm uh, willing to spend for an impulse buy. So it took a bit of time until deciding to place the order but now I finally got it and I'm actually quite impressed. It's really a super nice star projector. And before getting into any of the technical details, here is a sample video of how this looks in my kids bedroom. It's just awesome, a joy for both adults and kids. And to make things even nicer, at least for me, this is based on Tuya, so I can also control this via the Tuya app or through a Home Assistant Tuya integration. And there are various modes that uh, this can run. It even has a microphone for some sound uh, reactive modes. And uh, this unit has a couple of projectors. Um, this one is a green uh, laser, which takes care of the star pattern that you see. And the second one 
adds the various colors and clouds and galaxy-like patterns to fill the projection surface. And both of these uh, projectors have some sort of internal motor, so it's not just static, the whole uh, pattern moves. So far I've been super happy with this. I mean the build quality is really good and the projection is just so much better than I hoped it would be. So. I can highly recommend uh, this model. Just make sure you get the same one uh, to be Tuya based and marked as new model because there might also be others out there which might have like a different specs with maybe different build quality. So I'll put a link in the description to the exact spot where I got mine. Next up I got some more uh, replacement label tapes for my label printer. These are your standard 12 millimeter black and white tapes which is the stuff that I use the most. And I don't know if I ever mentioned this but at some point I upgraded to this uh, label printer which is I got I got this for a really good deal uh, as a used unit. Um, it has some more advanced functions when connected to my PC. I can do some very interesting prints, uh, but I still keep one of the more basic printers, the compact ones at home for day-to-day -day usage. And can you imagine what would happen if they started putting that shitty RFID DRM technology into these printers? Like who is it, Dymo, that did it with their, their newest uh, desktop label printers? I think EEV Blog had fun doing some videos on that topic, but I hope like Brother doesn't do that with uh, their label printers because uh, then we would have trouble and we would, we would have to hack them to be able to use these uh, replacement cassette tapes. Next up I got a set of these weirdly shaped blades which uh, I think can be really useful if you do any kind of board repair, BGA work, phone repair, laptop repair, that kind of stuff because with the blades shaped with all of these uh, funny shapes you can really get in there and remove epoxy from the sides of some BGA chips or you can scrape away some of the solder mass to solder your repair wire or for some general cleaning tasks. I think recently these got cheaper because when I checked them out about a year ago they were like 20 plus US dollars which I thought was too expensive at the time but now I think I ordered this for like less than three dollars shipped and yeah they're not going to last a long time but still pretty useful. Next up I got a refill of hitch ring. Uh, these are like slightly thicker 16 and 18 millimeter model here but I needed this recently for some modules which I wanted to electrically shield with hitch ring. And as usual, no matter how many different sizes and colors you have in your box of heat shrink, there is always that one odd size that you do not have when needed. And personally, I've only been like getting my stuff from AliExpress in, in recent years, but uh, I was wondering how do you source your heat shrink? Uh, do you get it from AliExpress or some more re reputable distributor where it might cost five times as much? I mean, sure, the quality must be better if you get your heat shrink from Mauser, but is it worth it for personal use? I don't think so. Next up I got a couple of uh, different styles of these SMD flat flex connectors with very fine pitch to through hole 0.1 inch adapter and these can be used to connect pretty much any type of uh, flat flex cable with up to 60 pins with a pitch that ranges uh, from 0.3 millimeter up to 1.0 millimeter pitch and it brings that out to the more standard uh, pin header. Typically you would use this to test LCD panels, keyboards, because that's the stuff that typically has such a um, flat flex connector, but like I said, not limited to that. Pretty useful to keep an assortment of these in your toolbox, especially since they can be very inexpensive and it's certainly not worth designing your own because you can get these ready-made. I recently reviewed that nice uh, power station from Blitzwolf. It was uh, Volog 417 if you're interested in that. It's a great product, very nice build quality and I've been using it happily ever since I got it uh, on like a weekly charge cycle. However, during testing it I realized I need more USB plug-in type electronic loads for testing such products with multiple USB ports and loading them to their, uh, to their max limits. So I ordered a couple of these which are like the cheapest, most basic type of uh, USB electronic load that you can get. This one with the resistors can probably do around 10 watts, maybe 2 amps at 5 volts, but it will probably get very hot doing that. The second one which has active cooling uh, can probably go up to 15 watts, up to 20 volts. So that's uh, nice as well for loading your uh, typical USB port. And links for these will be in the description below the video. 
Another item that uh, would have been useful when testing USB ports is like a USB to banana or USB to crocodile uh, test clip cable because then I could just hook it up to a regular electronic load or a multimeter or whatever your test instrument might be. So I looked around and found this model on AliExpress and this is from a company that I have tried before. Uh, the name is uh, Kleke. I'm not sure that what, that's the correct pronunciation, uh, but nonetheless, they have some decent products. They sell this as a kit. It should come one with a female USB connector and a second one with a male USB connector, but I've like either misplaced the other one when taking the packages apart or they forgot to include it. I'm not sure, but I have this big pile of uh, gray and yellow envelopes that I need to check before uh, sending them to the recycling bin see if I maybe missed something. Uh, what I wanted to mention is that this, this feels pretty nice, even better than uh, what's shown in the picture uh, that describes the product on AliExpress. And if, if you look at these uh, alligator clips, they have this copper look. I wouldn't go as far as saying they're copper, but they could be some form of solid copper, right? Or are those types of alligator clips just too expensive to be included in such a cheap product? In any case, the wire has uh, ratings on it. It's uh, 24 AWG, so pretty nice overall, especially for the cost. And uh, this should come in handy at the workbench. Another thing that I needed recently because I'm working with an ATX power supply as the main input for a project is a way to turn on or off the power supply. And I've been doing it the old fashioned way, bridging the green wire to ground. But that can cause problems if the connection is not secured as you can have your PSU shut down in the middle of a test. So I decided to order one of these which has the uh, female ATX uh, connector and you connect this to your power supply and then you have like a nice switch that you can use for turning the power supply on or off which is pretty nice. And I think it even has like an LED hooked up through the third wire which goes to the 12 volt rail to signal when it's on. Now, this is something you're definitely gonna want to keep in your toolbox, as I'm pretty sure it will come in handy someday just for the simple task of testing an ATX power supply. A link for this will be in the description below. Also for troubleshooting uh, debugging purposes, I think it's handy to keep around a couple of these like USB breakout boards. These contain both uh, female and male uh, breakouts and they break out to a 0.1 inch header. And if you're a regular to the uh, mailbag segment, you've probably seen these before, but I needed a refill since uh, I use them uh, for various projects. And you're probably not going to use these to debug like the high speed data lines for USB 3.0 as the signal integrity could be terrible on something like this, but you can sure use them to debug stuff, stuff like power or CC signaling lines when just stuff isn't working as expected. My next item is this uh, IP68 waterproof junction box which uh, features a, a three-way connection uh, glands. The cap is held together with these uh, four self-tapping screws and the seal is done with a uh, silicone o-ring. So the whole construction looks pretty nice and solid. It has these ribs in here, just makes it very strong. And it, it comes with this uh, screw connector inside but I would probably recommend you ditch this just use some uh, high quality Vago connectors for better reliability. And if you want to make it extra safe, you can also use one of those uh, special insulating gels. So after you've wired everything inside, you fill this up with mono gel, I believe was some commercial product. Then even if water manages, manages to get inside, it won't be able to get to the actual wiring. It uh, will be stopped by the gel. It's funny how if you look inside of this uh, enclosure, uh, this has been injection molded obviously, but you can actually see the uh, tooling marks left by the CNC router which was used to manufacture the die that created this part. And the last item in today's video is this uh, video switching module with three analog inputs uh, and one analog output. Now this is originally intended to be used for like uh, FPV, RC gear where you might have multiple cameras on a drone for example and uh, you have just a single video transmitter so in that case you would use something like this to remotely switch between the different camera feeds. Quite a versatile little module that I think can be used for more than FPV. 
I mean it could probably be used to remotely switch some analog video feeds for other projects as well. That was all for today, I hope this was interesting to watch and let me know in the comments below if you ordered any of these items, same as always links for all of the products shown in this video will be placed in the description below so do check them out. Thank you for watching this video, don't forget you can support the channel on Patreon with as little as $1 per month or you can simply hit that like button which is free and helps a lot. Now really, just hit that like button because it helps a lot. Thank you and I'll be seeing you next week.